All righty, we are live for the Get More Client Show, episode number 14. I can't believe it. Wow, pretty impressive. Uh, hope everyone is doing amazingly well today. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us. We're always grateful for it. As always, I'm joined with my co-host, Brian Downard. Brian, how you doing today, buddy? Living the dream. Living the dream. That's the only appropriate and correct answer I would say for the Get More Client Show. Today we're talking about something that a lot of entrepreneurs really struggle with and that is how to cheat father time. Now, no, we have not yet figured out how to get a DeLorean to hit a lightning strike and go backwards in time. And no, we have not created a time machine in any scenario, but what we have done is created a very specific set of skills. See all these movie references I'm throwing out there, by the way? Uh, all these specific set of skills and SOPs and documents that will help you become more effective with your time, thus being able to cheat father time because one of the great equalizers of this world that we all live in is of course the 24 hour time clock that we all have no matter where you are in your life or business uh, you always have only 24 hours in a day and how you use it is the key so what we're going to do is show you how to overcome the obstacle when you feel like you have a never-ending to-do list cheat father time get the most out of your day and out of your business every single day now as always, you can watch all of our uh, live episodes of the Get More Client Show on our Facebook group. Feel free to drop a uh, comment below if you are watching with us live. And if you're listening on the replay, you're always welcome to subscribe on your favorite podcast apps or on YouTube where we have our full show episodes and, of course, the clip show as well. Let's dive on in and let's start and talk about what even is productivity, right? I think this is one of those terms that's really commonly thrown out there uh, in the agency space, in the coaching space, as an entrepreneur in general, everyone wants to become more productive. In fact, this is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry that goes across every single business model. If you even remember way back earlier in the episodes we did regarding offers, we were talking about helping your clients become more productive with their time, helping them with operational efficiency, because the more things that you can do that save people time, the more you are providing their most valuable valuable asset, their time. It's the only thing you cannot buy. Talking about another movie reference, In Time, Justin Timberlake, underrated movie. In that movie, the currency is time. So what even is productivity? There's two words that I like to discuss when we're considering productivity, and that's efficiency and effectiveness. Effectiveness is getting the job done correctly, right? It worked. And then efficiently is doing something quickly, efficiently, effectively. Now, efficient means that you did something effectively. These are not meant to be uh, disassociated words. You wanna consider them as words together. If you're just doing things effectively, right, this is how you end up having way too much time spent on a job that should have been way less time. And this is also the same reason we talk about ensuring that you're not paying people by hour. Because when you pay people by hour, what you're doing is promoting inefficiency. Sure, they have to get the job done, which is being effective, but why would they get the job done in one hour if they can get paid three times the amount if they get the job done in three hours? So what we want you to be able to do is be not only efficient, but effective. That is productivity. If you're efficient, but you're not getting the job done, you're not really being efficient in the first place, and you're certainly not being effective, and there's no value to that. So we want you to be both. That's really key because, again, everyone has only 24 hours in a day. And with that being said, whether you are Jeff Bezos, uh, Elon Musk, LeBron James, Brian Downard, or Alex Schlinsky, you have to utilize the time that you are given every single day to the best of your ability. Now, I think a lot of people want to cheat father time and expect us to talk about like the David Goggins model of like getting up at 4.30 in the morning and like beating the competition. That's not really what we're going to talk about here. And if, if you like doing that, there's nothing wrong with it. I think, you know, sleep is really important. So we're not going to tell you to only sleep four hours a night. We want you to do what works best for you. But that's not what we're going to be focusing on on today show, we want to focus on things that will help you be productive with the time you have so you can actually sleep more appropriately, be able to build the business that you want and live the life that you want. It's all about how to utilize the time that you have properly because it's not the same 
for everyone. Yes, we all have the same amount of time allotted, but the way you utilize it and what your goals are is different for every person, what your responsibilities are. For example, me being a brand new dad, those things are new challenges that you have to implement in order to become more productive. It's very important that you can feel comfortable implementing and utilizing the time you have if you know where you're going. And I think that's one of the biggest keys here. The best way to utilize your time properly is to first understand what you want to accomplish with your time in the first place. Now, not just your time every single day or every single week or every single month or quarter or year. What we mean specifically is what is your time going to facilitate you to do in your business or in your life. These are what we call the non-negotiable times. What you're spending time on for prospecting, what you're spending time on team management, what you're spending on, on time on business development, what you're spending time on with family, what you're spending time on for yourself, and so on and so forth. The most important thing to understand is a lot how much time you have, what your goals are in general, and then utilizing that effectively. What do you think, Brian? I think you uh, threw a lot at us really quickly. I'm trying to digest it myself. Um, <laughs> I The biggest takeaway, though, for me is, again, the repetition and the idea that it's the equalizer we have. But so many people want to romanticize, especially in our culture, the overachievers and the people who are at the top 0.001% of doing this, doing their thing, their craft. LeBron James, David Goggins, you can make a list of them. And we're enamored by them because of their hyper human like superhuman capabilities but i, I want uh, first of all if you have those types of ambitions there's nothing wrong with that but i think it's realistic and fair to say that most people won't reach that level and that's fine and for me it's why are you comparing yourself to that if you don't want that again if you want that it's fine but if you don't want to have to wake up at 4 30 i know i don't i don't enjoy that I want the business to facilitate the lifestyle I want. So I think it's more about defining, like Alex saying, what you want to achieve and not comparing yourself to what you think you need to achieve because society or Instagram or social convention dictates that you do that. So the business should facilitate the lifestyle you want and you'll be miserable if you're just chasing some unrealistic, unattainable goal and it could be simple like let's just that's even just to like the people who are influencers posting about cars or houses and you like chasing this thing like just because you think it's going to make you happy and then you get it and you're like i actually it doesn't change who i am so exactly. I, I just for me it's it's looking at it really practically and almost in a this is weird to say but in, a, in a zen kind of peaceful way where you get to decide right and i think this is the this is the thing that a lot of us get caught up in and we say we have to do something versus we get to do it. As entrepreneurs, we get to do this. Um, and it's funny, I brought this up to a group of friends the other week and um, it was in a group of circle. One of our friends is a police officer and I was joking with him. I was like, that's what you get to tell yourself, right? Like when you get to naked, uh, wrestle a naked guy. It was like, like, that's what you get to do. I get to wrestle this naked guy. So just consider that. The stakes aren't as high in what you are doing. Alex likes to say that a lot. But I want to talk about something before we move into the actual meat of the episode just real briefly here um that no one thinks they're productive i think that's the weirdest it's the most cynical characteristic or trait that we have as humans that we never think we can achieve what we truly can to be fair that's probably true there are um you can get outside your comfort zone overachieve no questions but we always doubt ourselves and say we're not good even when we probably are more effective and more efficient than you think you are. So I think two things, acknowledge for yourself when you have been productive, feel productive, have that affirmation to feel good about, remind yourself, I did this well, and actually define what it is. Back to that, like, what is the KPI? If we're gonna make this really like granular, what is the thing, the number, the achievement in a day you need to hit in order to feel really good about that? And I think that actually is a nice transition here into our first tip, uh, unless, Alex, you want to say anything else before we dive in? No, I think everything you're saying is absolutely on the money. I, I love the idea of you know making sure that you actually know the KPI to identifying what will make you feel productive. Because you're right. If we did a survey of every single person that listens to this show before the show started, are you productive? I would say 99% would say, no, I'm not productive. It, it's the most common uh, like answer, but I think not only for productivity and we don't have to get into this route. I think it's for anything, right? It's like, are you good at sales? No. 
it's like no matter what, like you're you're always your own worst enemy. But I think yeah. productivity inherently uh, in and of itself, everyone wants to do more with their time, and I think that's why a lot of people will resonate with this episode. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes back to this comparison culture. It's not just cancel culture; it's comparison culture, and you need to go deep and probably spend some personal time thinking about what you really want out of this journey Thousand you have percent. for yourself. Agreed. So let's dive into some of like the actual practical, tangible takeaways you can have from today's episode. I know we like to get into some of the esoteric points of this, which I hope is helpful for you. But my first point that I want to bring up is to identify two to three high return, non-negotiable tasks. Alex briefly mentioned this a little bit in the intro, but you need to really choose a couple of elements and they change as your business grows. But maybe at the beginning stages, it's a non-negotiable high return task is warm calling. I'm going to spend my time right now calling these people. Maybe down the road, it's reaching out to dream clients or referral sources or strategic partnership sources. And as you have your team running your ads or doing your prospecting, but for you right now, if you could make a list and then let's make this a workshop, right? Even if you're here live or watching the, or listening to the recording, write down, if, unless you're driving, that's the only exception, drive safe, um, two to three high return tasks you know you should be focused on in your business that are non-negotiables and you need to create time for regardless and don't prioritize other things over that. We're going to talk a little bit how you can really take ownership of your calendar and not reprioritize things over what you know you need to get done because a lot of times I see it with our clients, they schedule prospecting for like early afternoon, but then something comes up or a sales call comes in and they don't, it's not a non-negotiable or something bad happens and it throws off their energy. And in the afternoon, they're just like, I don't want to do it. And it doesn't get done and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of not doing it over and over again. You fall out of the habit. So I want you to, and we'll get into again, owning your calendar here in just a moment, but for you, be specific about the high return tasks. When I say high return, I'm talking about what keeps clients and attracts new clients. Those are probably the two most important things you should focus on, getting and keeping good results for your current clients and getting new ones. Focus on what you can do in those areas. Um, and that's a very, very useful starting point for sure. Alex, anything else you wanna to add to that? Yeah, I think outside of the non-negotiable tasks on the business, I think you should do the exact same thing with family. I think. Brian mentioned something earlier about like we get to do this, which I think is such a great frame for mindset because I think sometimes as an entrepreneur, you get lost in the idea that you're your own boss. You get to kind of choose what you want. I had a conversation before this meeting with a client and they were like, you know, my boss is basically my clients. And while in many ways that's true and we can all resonate with that, the reality is like you chose to be an entrepreneur to have your time freedom. And it's ironic that so many of us want this time freedom and yet build businesses around not being able to have any time freedom, imprisoning ourselves. So not only non-negotiable time for your business, right? But non-negotiable time for yourself. So non-negotiable times for your kids, non-negotiable times for your husband, wife, or partner. And most importantly, and I think a lot of people forget this, non-negotiable time for yourself, right? Brian has been an adamant with us uh, in POD team and with all of our clients about ensuring that you have a hobby outside of your business that's personal to you. Now, it can end up being something like with your wife, like Brian loves doing CrossFit. It just so happens to also be with his wife, but it's not, it's not really a, a thing for them. It's a thing for Brian. It just so also happens to be with his wife. And I think that's a really important thing because that's a non-negotiable for Brian. And there's probably something there for you that's non-negotiable. And I think again, like talking about the social constructs, it doesn't matter what it is. No one can tell you it's right or wrong. Whether it's, I like collecting Pokemon cards at 45 years old, or I like playing disc golf, or I like going to play polo. Like it does not matter what it is as long as it's legal uh, and okay. Um, it doesn't matter what the social construct says, uh, who, should it, who should do it or who should not. Uh, you only get one life, choose it how you want. Your time is the most precious thing you have. And this is coming from someone, as you probably already know, had open heart surgery less than 30 months, 30 weeks ago. So um, yeah. I think it's pretty important. If I, I would can, say your last I, note, Alex, on this is it's really empowering too to do that because then you do feel like you own your calendar and you're like, I'm not gonna let something else or someone else dictate this thing that's important to me. I'm going to do it. And you've, again, that confidence not, not only translates into that thing itself, but then into the rest of your business and your ability to control your calendar. So yeah, I just wanted to add that 100%. last point. 
Speaking of calendars, let's talk about how we execute and utilize this. So obviously we can't run this show without giving a massive shout out to my beautiful wife, Shira Splinsky, the COO or former COO of Prospecting On Demand. Um, basically what she had created for myself that we've now allowed for all of our clients to utilize is this thing called the Daily Focus. The reason why is because when I was building Prospecting On Demand and when I was starting my marketing agency and trying to be a human being all at the same time, uh, I started to realize that uh, I just have a never ending to do list of tasks and it would basically be a cycle of, okay, I'm, I'm getting some stuff done and getting some stuff, some stuff done, fire happens, then I'm behind on everything. Then I'm behind on everything the next day. Then I'm overwhelmed. Then I try to overwork myself and then I burn out and then it's a vicious cycle over and over and over. And usually the cause or ra rather the condition of what happens after burnout is either one, you lose money that was on the table from sales opportunities, two, you lose money from current clients because they cancel, or three, you lose all of your own ability and passion to be able to bring what you need to every day in the business. And those are dangerous things. At some point it will come back. It just depends on how soon. For me, it would probably be a couple days. Uh, for other people, it might be a couple weeks. And obviously that's very dangerous. And if you've been in that position before of burnout with productivity because of this never ending to-do list, there's a frame that Shira created called the daily focus. And basically what the daily focus is, and it's very easy to do, at the end of every single day, all you have to do very simply is identify the three most important tasks that you have to do tomorrow in order to feel accomplished for that day. And this is what Brian was talking about at the beginning of the KPI. Like, what do you have to work on today to feel accomplished? It's not feasible that you accomplish every single thing you want to every single day. That's not possible. You can't do it that way. Now, obviously, building a team and a community and a culture obviously supports you in being able to execute a lot more, but you specifically as the human being, as the individual, how much can you truly accomplish? If you can find three high leverage tasks every day that will make a big difference, it will really help you. And what you want to try to avoid on this daily focus is putting in the things that's the same every day. Like, oh, I'm gonna prospect for 30 minutes. That doesn't mean it's not valuable or you can't do that. It just makes it not as valuable long-term because it becomes too repeatable. The easiest way to do this is using a spreadsheet. And all you have to do on this spreadsheet is to put in the weeks of the, uh, the days of the week, right? And then put in at the end of every single day, the three things you're gonna do tomorrow. At the end of the day tomorrow, before you do the following day, you just identify if you accomplished it, if you started it, or if you didn't start it. And if you go through this over and over, and you do this for a week, two weeks, a month, three months, well, you'll start identifying as one, how you prioritize tasks and start learning to bunch them. Because if you have a bunch of things that you started but didn't finish, it's probably because every single day it says, finish webinar, finish webinar, finish webinar. Soon you'll learn to write, start webinar outline, start uh, draft one, uh, record video, put the slides together, right? And you'll start breaking down the tasks, which will really help you chunk things out because us as entrepreneurs have a really bad time of like saying we're gonna do this project that's really gonna take a lot of time and different tasks and just keep saying we're gonna keep doing project X, like for example, run this webinar, that becomes really challenging. And then also what you'll start learning is how much time it takes you to do things, right? You anticipate you're gonna do you know X task and you're gonna keep doing it, but it just takes longer than you consistently think and slowly but surely you'll learn how to prioritize your time best. And this is where this word, my favorite word, planned obsolescence, comes into place. The daily focus is not meant to be used forever, right? The idea is to teach you how to prioritize your time, how much time you spend to do tasks, how to batch your tasks more appropriately, how to prioritize your tasks, which I think I said already, and then how to actually put them in your calendar so they get done, right? We had a client recently tell us that my calendar is my Bible, right? Like he said that specifically because he needs to make sure you want him to be on a call, he needs to have it on his calendar, which Brian and I resonate with very strongly because it's the same idea. So in order to execute this well, our goal is that you use this probably for a month to three months, depending on the type of person you are, and then it's just shifted completely over to the calendar, which you'll still do at the end of every day by putting the next day's most important tasks on the calendar. And that is the easiest and most effective strategy that we've seen to become more effective with your time. Now, there's many other ones, like the five questions of clarity that Brian's going to talk about, but this is just a simple framework. Now, there's a couple other quick things I wanna bring up 
on this daily focus portion of the call or conversation. And the first thing would be themed days, right? Having days where you're doing certain things. Now, the most common and easiest one is the get shit done day. I think you can probably guess what the get shit done day is. That day is where you take absolutely no client meetings. You do absolutely nothing other than working on tasks that are in the business, sorry, on the business, meaning like working on internal SOPs and processes and hirings and all that stuff so that you can make massive progress and save time later on. Usually we'd advise you do a get shit done day at least once a month. You can do it weekly if you like, but it really becomes freeing overall once you start freeing up your time. One of our former colleagues, great guy, John Davey, he recently made a post about how he stopped working on Fridays and takes Fridays off because he made other days in the week get shit done days because that's his choice of time. And I think that's really empowering. And I hope it empowers you to feel comfortable to see something that's different than no, Brian, if you're not working every single day, 30 hours a day, which is not possible because six more hours than you have available time, you're a failure. And I think that's a really big misconception and problem in the industry that we live in today. And I don't mean agency owners or marketers. I mean like the capitalist environment of you have to move fast every single day or you're ruining things. So get a routine down, put together a get shit done day and make sure that you can actually build out a plan and process that's effective and easy to utilize through a KPI, meaning this is what I have to do, how I have to do it, when I have to do it, how to prioritize it and go from there. Use the calendar, use the daily focus. That's my spiel. Brian, what else did you want to share there? Yeah, one of my um, favorite little the hacks here, and I'll try and give you guys some practical things you can walk away with here today, would be the, something called the two-minute rule. Now, the two-minute rule is very, very dangerous because it can very quickly become this thing where you default to, oh, I'll just do it, I'll just do it, I'll just do it, and it becomes death by a thousand cuts instead of you just being, um, you know, taking the extra few minutes to delegate it and or create a system for a team member to hand that off to. But if you're in a place where you don't have that yet, you don't have the team, and or you do have a team, but it is a task that is required of you as the business owner um, or it's just something you know you have to own, if it takes less than two minutes, do it right away. Don't schedule it. Those little stupid baby tasks can add up and they live on your calendar and drive you crazy. So look at a task. If it takes less than two minutes, just do it right away. Don't schedule it. Don't make a task. And again, ask yourself critically, is this something that I should be delegating in anyways and not even be giving it the 30 seconds, one minute, whatever it'll take to do it? Brian, it's such so, a good segue to the next portion of this. Uh, called the five questions of clarity, which I'm going to give over to you because I think it's really valuable. Right before we say that, I, I think there's a valuable insight here as well. I think the most cancerous statement an entrepreneur can make constantly would be, I can do this faster myself. This is yeah. what ends up happening when you multiply it and do the math over time. If you were to say a 30 minute task, I can do it faster myself and you do that every week for 52 weeks, you'll start to realize pretty quickly, holy crap, how much out, how many hours I am giving away uh, instead of just delegating it overall. But how do you delegate it? Where do you delegate it? How do you identify what to delegate? Well, there's this tool that we call the five questions of clarity. You don't even need a tool. All you need is the five questions and Brian's going to break it down for you right now. I didn't have a good joke for fumbling that handoff because you did it so beautifully, but I wanted to you know, joke. Dude, I crushed that handoff. You, you I, did. I, 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 know how I'm gonna, I know how I'm going to do this better than you. Yeah, so this is one of our favorite tools and resources. Usually if we have a client who comes to us already uh, very busy, a lot of clients, maybe freelancer trap because they're just doing too much, this is the first exercise we have them do. So if you're telling yourself, there's not enough time in a day, I'm too crazy busy, I'm doing too much, this will help you right away. Okay, so five questions. We recommend if you are really feeling the stress of everything you're doing right now, do this at least daily for a week. Now, later on in your business, you might be able to get away with doing this once a week, maybe once a month, once you have a better harness on actually what you are delegating and not doing and making sure you're not doing everything. But let's break it down. It's a pretty simple system. You're gonna ask yourself daily these five questions. What took my energy? What non-CEO activities did I do? I'm gonna clarify that in just a moment. What tasks can be delegated? What systems do I need? And what can I stop doing? The last one is my favorite, because what can I stop doing? What can you just eliminate entirely? What is not serving you and what your actual higher goals are in the business or your personal life? I love that one. That's just a list of get rid of that shit immediately. Uh, a lot of times for you, some entrepreneurs, 
and I'm speaking from experience, that's probably creating content or worrying about your website or trying to build out a webinar right now. If you're an agency owner or a coach, stop worrying about that shit. You're not gonna automate it right now. We need to sell one-to-one, -one, get really damn good at that, and then we can scale with those types of systems, okay? But some of those things you can stop doing that aren't generating opportunities or keeping clients, get that shit on this list, okay? Number one, um, let's group in that second, those other two questions. What systems do I need? What can be delegated? Those are sort of in the same, but a system could be something you maybe get software for um, or develop some sort of standard operating procedure and or what can be delegated, what do, who do you have a team for or who do you ideally want to hire for that you could delegate? Just because what tasks can be delegated and you write something out doesn't mean you have that team member right now, if you do even better, but if you don't, you can plan for that, right? Get ahead of the curve. Don't be reactive to truly needing that person and then not having any options. Uh, then kind of working in reverse, what took my energy? That sort of like just gets your, your brain flowing and uh, gets ideas for the other elements in my opinion. But then the what non-CEO activities did I do? Defining for yourself what CEO actually means because it doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. It means you get to do what you want in the business, right? So define what that is for you. And again, be intentional about getting the things you don't want to do, the things that are out of your, they call it the zone of genius and give those to someone else because you're just going to kill yourself trying to be a pro at everything. We're not... Facebook ad experts, so we hire professionals to run ours and coach our clients. If you're not a Facebook ad professional, stop buying courses and beating yourself up and trying to do that, okay? So definitely make sure you are delegating these items and even more important than that, a really think a nuanced thing here that a lot of uh, workaholic entrepreneurs need is someone on your team who's not sole responsibility, but one of their responsibilities, typically your project manager, um, executive assistant, your, your partner, your second in command, whoever that is, them hold you accountable to actually delegating and not taking on everything because you'll end up doing that. You won't hold yourself accountable to doing it. You know yourself, you're gonna default to not doing it. It's very rare that we have a client who's actually committed to a taking less amount of time in the business, right? Like um, one of the new ones we just brought on commits to the four hour work week Super interesting, right? But I don't hear that very often. It's usually they're committing to like a 50, 60 hour plus work week. So yeah, I would, in the vein of also delegating, a really quick kind of trick, and we'll go into this deeper in another episode, but would be having a job scorecard for your team members and being clear about what their tasks are. So if you want to add to that to delegate something, you can put it on there and they're crystal clear about what the expectations, what the role is, et cetera. And I also want to, before we kind of pivot here to the last couple of items, the idea of the cost of opportunity for overcompensating or over delivering. This is something we've been bringing up a lot on the show because it's so important. But when you give a moose a muffin, baby. When you give a moose a muffin, for sure. So giving someone who, you know, it, you're going to continuously have to go back, give them more for the same amount or less. And then this massive time suck is created where you're not getting the result and you're spending all your time and energy and you lose the client anyways or something worse happens. So I just be very intentional with how you are not um, or how you are and how you are not spending your time and giving it your energy to clients. And I think part of that we're going to talk about just a little bit um, with a service level agreement, a little quick little hack there. But let's uh, let's just keep this train rolling. I think the five questions to clarity, walk away with that, go rewatch this, get those five questions down, fill it out and take action on that. Don't just look at it and go, well, I'm not productive at all. Use it, delegate it, create yeah, systems, stop doing shit. Use it to beat yourself up, there's no value to it, right? What took my energy? What non-CO activities did I do? What tasks can be delegated? What systems do I need? What can I stop doing? If you do that every single day, you'll start to identify quickly the 80-20 principle, right? The Pareto principle. What 80% of my results are coming from 20% of my work and what 80% of my time wasting is coming from 20% of my work or the alternative. And that's the stuff you need to delegate. If you take a really hard look at how you spend your time, you may not like how it shakes out, which we completely understand, but that type of awareness allows you to open up yourself to identifying what you can optimize on. This isn't to make you feel bad, right? Like we've all been there before feeling crappy about not having the right you know, time being spent appropriately. But if you identify the things that you're spending the most time on that are not generating you real opportunities back, it's gonna hurt you. Your phone even sends you, uh, like iPhones at least do, um, sends you a weekly like app 
a notification of how much time you're spending on certain things. And that will even give you some insight, but it's the same idea. You can use it on your calendar. If you're actually tracking what you're doing, you can also delete apps that you're wasting time on. You can, not that you have to, but if it's wasting your time for things that I think are really important, you can do that, right? And, and I think overall, if you can just simply turn off notifications, put your phone on do not disturb, only have that for emergency communication. I think a client told me their phone was on airplane mode yesterday so you can get stuff done. It will allow you to focus better on the things that you need to really hone in on. These are all the personal, or sorry, business things that need to happen to ensure that you're utilizing your time appropriately and also making sure that you can get the most out of your time every single day. So again, that daily focus, the five questions to clarity, understanding the 80-20 Pareto principle. Before we head out today, I just wanna give Brian over the opportunity to talk a little bit about personal things that you can automate to take your time off. Um, and I'll just share one and then segue it for Brian, and that would be grocery shopping. So my wife Shira uh, fell off a uh, bike about a year and a half ago, and she really hurt her ankle. And we had a trip planned uh, for a mastermind event that I was speaking at, but she couldn't come afterwards. So she had to get groceries when I was gone, but she couldn't go to the grocery store. So she uh, got on Instacart for the first time and ordered groceries delivered. And she realized I just saved about an hour of my time and the trip to the grocery store and her anxiety that she gets trying to choose between different you know, cooking stuff as you guys can probably all imagine. And now I just freed up all that time. Can we pay for this ongoing? And that was something that was a no brainer because it's worth our time. And now it's the same potentially with a nanny or with a maid or with a cleaning service. And Brian, you mentioned there was a couple other ones you were thinking about too. Yeah, I mean, you touched on some good ones. I mean, what in your personal life can you buy, you know, where can you buy your time back? I mean, nannies, meal prep is the big one for us, like having a HelloFresh $20 a meal for two people and it's pre-prepared and take, just saves time and energy. And I think um, we're too quick to give our time and energy to certain things before we see how it's actually using us and love that there's a lot of good options out there i think technology can be a tool but it can also be a hindrance so Agreed. um i'll kind of breeze through that last one because i know we're trying to bring this to a nice concise end but uh blocking out distractions um because it's so easy for your phone to you can choose like for your family members right your kids your wife whoever to call you when if they need to reach you but everyone else is blocked out or on your computer turning on do not disturb because I know your computer gets a billion notifications now. It's like tied to your phone. So just be intentional with how you use your time. I think that's the headline of the takeaway. Love it. Um, find what you want out of this life and your business and uh, be intentional about achieving that. And Agreed. that's what the show is here uh, designed to help you do. So I know it's usually to get more clients shown. That's the theme, but this is important to create the space um, mentally, uh, physically, et cetera, just to actually get more clients, have the time for it, create time to schedule to do that. So uh, I hope this was valuable for you and everyone here today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button if you enjoyed this. Alex, you want to bring us home? Anything else you want to share? Yeah, I think the last thing to say on this episode is just a reminder that don't always be, be uncomfortable trading your time for money. Your time is always more valuable than the money is, right? So if you're second guessing whether you should pay for meal prep or HelloFresh or get groceries delivered, if you're saving tons of hours of time, make it a no-brainer. Your time is the most precious thing that you have and you don't have to have some cataclysmic horrible thing happen to you all you have to do is look at your friends and family or yourself and the time that you wish you had those are the things that are most important to you brian and i always appreciate you guys giving us your time thank you so much and we'll see you on the very next episode see you